welcome to the Properties of Function Lectures presented by www.free-academy.com. This is the second lecture of our calculus series, and as stated before, we're going to be discussing in detail the properties of functions. Now recall from the previous lecture I introduced that y, we use y and f of x interchangeably. This is done by using the relationship that y equals f of x which uh, we're going to define now and it's going to be a common part of our lectures from the future. We're going to define uh, two different things right away, two different terms. We ha in every equation we have what is known as the dependent variable and the independent variable. And this is to state that when we enter a value for the independent variable, the independent variable is unrestrained and the dependent variable is directly dependent on what value we put in for the independent variable. So basically, if I put 6 in for the independent variable, we're going to get only one output for the dependent variable and that output is going to be determined by our equation. A good example being y equals x squared plus 4. In this, our x is the independent variable and our y is the dependent variable. Using our relationship that y equals f of x, we could also write that equation as f of x equals x squared plus 4. And again, x is still our independent variable. In this case, f of x is our dependent variable. Let's see some examples of how this is evaluated. We have here f of 0 equals something. Let's find out what that something is. What we're going to do is we're going to use our equation. And we're basically just going to treat x as a placeholder in that equation. So I'm going to write out here the same equation, but I'm not going to put in x. I'm just going to put in these parentheses. Now what's ever inside the parentheses in our uh, function is what we're going to put inside the parentheses in the equation. So 0, 1, and 2. Well 0 squared equals 0. If you add 4, then you get 4 back out. 1 squared equals 1 plus 4 equals 5. And 2 squared equals 4 plus 4 equals 8. By putting a value in for the independent variable, which giving an x a value, we got out a y value as our dependent. And this is exactly related to whatever we put inside the parentheses. To so say what we said before, you have exactly one output for every input. Now what we put inside the parentheses, we call the argument of the function. I don't know if you're ever really going to need to know that, but, you know, you do now, so congratulations. Let's bring up a new note here and get into some new terminology. We have, I have written here, the domain and the range of the function. And let's pick the function, a really common one, f of x equals the square roots of 4 minus x squared. And notice that if you have a value greater than positive 2, I guess written like that, either way, let's say if you put 3 in for x here, you would get 4 minus 9, you'd get a negative value under the radical. And it turns out that x cannot be greater than positive 2, or it cannot be less than negative 2. Let's graph this over here on our function. And if we plug in 0 for x, we would get the square root of 4, which equals 2. And in fact, what uh, we end up here is a half circle. This is uh, the general equation for a half circle. a squared minus x squared under the square root. And you can figure that out by using Pythagorean's theorem even. So what we have here is a limited number of values that we can 
possibly enter into our equation here to get something back out, and that's called our domain. It's the set of values, set of x values, that describe our function f of x. Also notice that we only got a limited number of y values graphed on the equation on our graph here too. We have nothing below zero, there is no negative y values, and y never exceeds positive two. That's known as our range, and it's the set of y values that describe our function f of x. And this is going to uh, bring me back to something that I actually put into the first lecture, and that's our vertical line test. Anywhere on our graph, we can draw vertical lines, and if at any time our vertical line intersects more than two places, more than one place on the graph, then f of x is not a function. For any line, any vertical line, the line will never intercept the graph more than once. Got a little squeeze there, but either way. For any vertical line that we draw at any x value, the line will never cross the graph more than one time. That is our definition of the vertical line test.